welcome to the Amijo Show. My name is Jo Ball Wintrot and this is the Amijo Show. This is one of the very last few episodes of hashtag 21 days, the first 21 days of lockdown, offering some support um, and a bit of help and hopefully a bit of interesting knowledge and without doubt today from my wonderful guest. But uh, to you that's at home and having a coffee or just kind of want to change from Netflix maybe. So um, my friends are all appearing on the show and I've delighted to introduce to you today Jay Diamond who is a love and intimacy coach from Islington. Hi Jay. Hello, how are you? Hi everyone. I am really good thanks. Hi, yeah I'm just loving this weather. This The, the weather makes such a difference for me and so I'm mm-hmm. managing to get out in the garden. But how are you doing? Because obviously you have, um, you have a li- very little one to look Hi. after now. <laughs> I have a six week old, very vocal little girl who knows what she's want. She's a very bossy baby and very beautiful. Yes, so. bossy girls rock, bossy girls rock. <laughs> oh, so yeah, it's been really intense, uh, really, really intense. I had an unexpected uh, C-section. So I've also been really recovering physically as well. Um, and I'm, I'm I'm getting there with it, so I'm I'm feeling much more like myself. So oh, and so if there is a bit of background noise, it's there are people in their gardens enjoying the sun. Absolutely, well, we got got to, haven't we? It's, we've been waiting a long time for spring summer. So mm-hmm. yeah, oh, fantastic! And your your other half's at home as well, isn't he? So that you've got it some is, help. Thank goodness. Yes. Yeah, so it's it's and he's a great dad. He's a really great dad. Aww. and a great partner so I felt very looked after very taken care of which um, I've really needed really really needed it's been very humbling first six weeks I must say mm. yeah and you're quite independent and quite you know you're you're, you're all over you know you're just like flat out you're dedicated to your clients and your business aren't you so you've obviously must have slowed down and like okay well everyone has stopped obviously but you know what I mean I've travelled all over the world and it's been amazing. I've loved travelling and I've travelled a lot by myself. I've lived in Hawaii, I've lived in Thailand, I've lived in New York. So I've done so much and it's been amazing. It's like I feel like I'm in this new place of very deeply learning how to receive, very deeply learning how to receive from men and trust that like in such a deeper place and in um, and in such a beautiful way. You know, it's very what's the word foundational aspect of man woman and child you know and the little bubble that we've got around that and all the learning and the up leveling and um the letting go of control that it's taking you know and it's great and it's great i'm loving it oh yeah that's wonderful that's really wonderful um and um and so obviously you you know you normally well and i'm sure you are still working with clients in love and intimacy relationships you've you know you've always been someone in our network we're, we're both in a network called Athena um who has just shone in your direct messaging I love your directness I never I'll never forget the first meeting I met you at and you, <laughs> stood, up, you stood up and did your pitch and you the first thing you said and we've never met you before and it's a group of sort of 20 women that mostly knew each other and this new lady glowing in gold stood up and said oh okay who's ever had an orgasm <laughs> And one of our one of our members is someone who's kind of like a little bit kind of you know a bit shy about talking about stuff like that and so I absolutely just burst out laughing I couldn't stop laughing for the rest of the meeting <laughs> it's like do you just say how it is because we do need to talk about love we need to talk about relationships that includes the physical side of things absolutely orgasms and sex <laughs> absolutely because this is the thing that a lot of people um often have problems with in long-term relationships that you know they don't necessarily like to talk about and I think a lot of people resign themselves to the fact that you know the intimacy will fade and that that's just the way that it is and they're never going to have an exciting sex life again and that's it's just not true and there is, you know, as we are with someone on a long-term level, the love does deepen. There are different issues that we deal with. You know, life is life. There are health issues and stress issues and financial issues, all of which affect our ability to be intimate from a heart level, but also from a sexual level. But there are so many things that we can do that 
that can create that connection again. But like mm -hmm. every other area of our life, it requires our attention and learning. And there are some things that when implemented the right way, even these small tweaks can make such a difference to people's life. It does. And sorry to, to interrupt you, but we've um, <laughs> just got a parcel delivery, which is just wonderful. This is the joy of remote working. So this has come from the parcel. I'm just going to have to pause this recording a second. Okay. Right. Sorry about that, everyone. Hopefully you've still got some eardrums left after my dog decided to come in because he had the delivery man. So, yeah, sorry. Back to uh, relationships. And, and you're saying how the, um, the connection can... Can, you know, we feel like the uh, the physical side of our relationships is just going to go downhill, like really yeah. slowly. And even just like the connection, you know, oh, you know, with anybody that we're in close proximity with, and of course now we're in this COVID situation where we're on this total lockdown. Most people actually probably never spent this length of time with their partners and with the children, with their family, con consistently and consecutively probably for years because most people even if they take a holiday together it's only two weeks yeah. from start to finish and they're allowed out of the house you know they're allowed you know they, and they go out by themselves a little bit as well so um there are different pressures that that, that we can be under and with long-term relationships you know we have so many different experiences we all go through our ups and downs it's all very normal mm -hmm. and the question is you know are you willing to learn? Are you willing to do what it takes to keep that connection, to keep coming back together, even when things can go on that kind of fairground up and down ride? So what would you, uh, what would be your advice to people that are, you know, are, are finding it a bit tough, either they're, they're getting a bit bored of each other or, you know, or, or, or actually what happens can happen on holidays when you're together um, that you haven't been for a while. Suddenly these little, little kind of niggly things that will, we're, we're buried away because obviously you just go to work and do your stuff. Yeah. They suddenly rise up and they suddenly become quite big in the room, don't they? That is such a good point. And it really, it's, it's tricky because it really depends on the personality of you and your partner. I, I would say that while we're all cooped up together, really addressing and, and going for the jugular on the big things i would say this is not the time this is probably not the time to address the big hairy stuff you know because we don't have that capacity to kind of have a little bit more space from each other to be able to go away with some friends and have a coffee and and kind of talk it out or to go to the gym and and work it out so that you can come back in a bit of a healthy place to have that conversation it might be that at this time we kind of mentally bank in some things and think, okay, that's something that we need to come back to. And we can even do that verbally and say, listen, this is probably not the best time for us to, to address this. But in a, in a few weeks time, this is something that we need to talk about. And this is something that works works well with people because it gives them a little bit of time to sort of prepare rather than just sitting down one day and say right we need to talk and we're talking about mm. this now yeah now if there are things that need to be do need to be addressed at this time you use that same tactic it's really helpful of saying listen i'd like to talk about um, you know i'm noticing this is and stick to the facts this is the thing that is really good stick to the facts i'm noticing that in the evenings for instance you're drinking you seem to be drinking quite a lot or you seem to be quite grumpy and i'm feeling like i don't really know how to act around that when would be a good time to talk about it and when we can sort of stick more to the facts of like you know I'm wondering what's going on. I'm feeling a little bit awkward because the mood seems to have changed. I don't know. Mm. When would be a good time? It gives the other person a little bit of a chance to say, all right, let's talk about this later or let's talk about this now. You're kind of inviting them in rather than sort of pointing the finger at and saying, this is what we need to do. And um, <clears throat> I've got a whole masterclass on communication, which is... Uh, so helpful because the way that we communicate the things that we're having problems with makes all the difference in the kind of the feedback that you get you know what is whether the person feels attacked and he's just defensive or whether you can sort of work together towards the problem 
and say, okay, it's us against the problem. How can we deal with this together? Mm. So that's, that's a really good way to kind of handle those little things that need to be tweaked. Yeah, no, that's so important. I remember um, watching uh, some kind of YouTube video on about that, that, you know, um, it's, we're kind of, we live in our emotional states quite a lot as women, but men, they kind of, they just, they need to be able to get into a space of emotional space. Um, and, you know, and so they almost have to, it has to be, you can't just, uh, they, they used an analogy, it was a male coach, and he used an analogy, he said, think, if you think about it, if someone's been at work all day and had all the stresses and strains of the, the day, not that that's going to be happening, right? but, um, but then they come in inside and they're tired and they just want to sit down and just switch off and switch all this off. And then you just suddenly throw them this kind of barrage of, right, and by the way, you know, I've been doing this all day. You know, and, and, you know, that for the, for the person to suddenly get into that mode of receiving that information, let alone even processing it, processing mm. it, let alone processing it with love and kindness. And, and, um, you know, it's, it's actually, it, that, I thought that really hit home to me because I think it's easy for us women just to, it, to know it doesn't go very far with us. Does it kind of, well, kind we of can just, just switch. We're just excellent multitaskers. We can switch that we can do three things. We can hold three conversations at the same time in a room yeah. and yeah. dip in and out of them. And, and often a man's just like, what are you even like what are you even <laughs> saying is just yeah. like oh my god he's just going to back away and it's so funny because i had this exact conversation with my partner and what was wonderful and i want you all to take from this was that there's there's something around giving permission and giving permission to take care of your own needs and it looks it looked like this we had this conversation about him seeming a little bit distant and seeming a little bit grumpy and what was that about and and as the conversation came on he literally said the same thing he said you know I've come home from work and you've got an idea about something or something you want to talk about and he said and as soon as I get through the door because of course I was heavily pregnant then and I was at home a lot and you know I'm like oh, a human hooray um, <laughs> yeah straight into that conversation and he's just like he's just trying to head for the fridge to get a sandwich because he's starving he's just on a shift and it's like can you you know I just it's a bit too much and I said do you need because I, I understand I caught it I said do you need a bit of time before we kind of get into it he said yeah I do but he didn't even know that's what he needed right until we kind of had that conversation so I said well what about if you say can you just give me 15 minutes Hmm. And I will, I will give you the 15 minutes and I'll shut up and I'll go and keep myself busy. And he yeah. said, right, okay. So two things happened from that. One, I gave him the permission as in this is allowed in our relationship. We're allowed to have our own wants, needs and desires. Hmm. Just give me the sign. So he does that. And two, I was more mindful that that's what he needed. Hmm. And if I forget, he can tell me, I just need 15 minutes. And this, you know, if we're in situations with our families where we are all in close proximity yeah. and uh, tempers are getting frayed and we are getting a little bit tetchy with each other it's a really good thing to say up front I'm just yeah. going to say I just need 10-15 minutes to breathe to, and then I'll come back yeah. and when we kind of do it before it gets to the point of this and you preempt mm -hmm. this that's the best thing to do yeah yeah and then you're create then you're creating a space for it aren't you rather than it just being just something that's thrown into your lap yeah makes... yeah because it's you know some once you kind of notice what are the trigger points or what are the places and spaces where maybe i get a bit grumpy or you get a bit grumpy or the day's gone on long if you do that before the situation happens what can we do what can we say what works for us what's the, the firefighting that we need mm um then then perfect like one thing my partner's learned to say to me is what do you need because instead of just immediately going to fix it mode yeah he'll ask me okay what do you need and sometimes i need someone to say that to me so i can think oh i'm a bit all over the place but actually what what will make me feel calm now what will make yeah. me feel good and yeah. then i can actually turn that switch on instead of just being frantic and emotional or panicking about something actually what i need is water especially when i'm breastfeeding i need i need water yeah. 
I need you to get me a snack and I need that breast that that second breastfeeding pillow and then he'll you know it gets those things and everything's calm yeah that's such a simple but powerful question a friend of mine um he's a coach and he do, he did this yesterday we had a chat on the phone and he said what do you need joe and when he when he asked me i thought need i didn't need anything and then i thought about it, i thought oh my gosh i know exactly what i need and it was nothing what i would have anticipated that i would say but there's something i just needed to do and say that wasn't was the opposite to what i really what i thought because need can come from a much deeper place, can't it? The thought, thought comes from Definitely. here, and the need, the need can come from here, and that, and that's the difference, isn't it? Awesome, awesome. Well, I, th I think I need to get you back on the show another, another time, because <laughs> I'd love to hear like your top tips for like um, making a romantic night. So I'm gonna, this is gonna keep running this show. I try, okay. don't want to try and go over too much, but um, I think well, I've got um, a free download that anyone can get, if, and it's a bit.ly link. I don't know if you've heard of those. It's bit.ly. Yeah. Um, so it's bit.ly forward slash relationship hacks. And it's just got Brilliant. three really great relationship hacks that anybody can use to try and get through some of the kind of the sticky stuff that might come up. Fantastic. I'll put it in the link of this video. Um, before we finish, there's something that's been on my radar, um, and I, I know you, you know this is coming up, but um, when when this happened for me, I was thinking, right, if this had happened when, dot, 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 um, mm -hmm. and the, the, the time that I rem remember thinking, oh my gosh, if this had happened when I was in uh, a very difficult, abusive relationship in the past, um, this would have been phenomenally difficult for me. So um, what, what I just thought we'd just mention and finish off with is that um, there are lots of women and men, uh, especially women, because they, they are more high, higher percentage of, of domestic violence um, uh, victims are women that will be in very difficult situations right now. Um, and so this is just a very quick uh, little bit on the end of this, just to Jay is going to offer just some advice that if someone is really struggling and they're in a very difficult situation um what, what could you advise them to do right now jay so at this at this point with the way that things are and, and the way that we have this socialized uh, social isolation it's extremely difficult and so this is very much about doing whatever it is that you need to do in your situation for self-preservation whatever makes it easier for you right now then you should do that without any guilt whatever makes you feel okay that's a healthy way to deal with what you're dealing with you know on the other side there are some options that you might be able to take really try and um keep your connections go in so if that means that you, you have a friend that you can call and you, you just check in with do do that just so that you can have a breather so you can connect to someone else outside of the house and you can have that kind of just for, for your own kind of mental support that you have another adult to talk to if you if it's possible to get out for a walk by yourself once a day then then take that walk either go by yourself or take the children and get out of the house and take the long route you know and walk slow and breathe slow and just just try and you know obviously as much as we can for avoiding people but but try and get that time out of the house the other thing I really suggest is there are so many short meditations that you can get for free on YouTube, which are just going to help your anxiety to reduce that you could do maybe once or twice a day during the day, just by putting your headset on your phone and listening to that. Um, what I'll also say is that um, there are lots of videos on YouTube with something called EFT which is emotional freedom technique and that really helps to reduce stress and anxiety as well and so you you just need to literally look on YouTube and look at EFT or tapping for anxiety tapping for stress and a list of videos are going to come up and you can do that in 10 minutes from home without leaving the house and mm. um, I've got an anxiety um, meditation and energy clearing you can reach out to me for that um there are lots of free ones on youtube mm. and i think at the moment just try and do whatever it takes to to reduce 
your stress and and have a thing if something does feel that something is going to get really sticky really know who are the people that you can call on and and ask them if you can you know if i need to get out if i need to come for a bit can i come or those people that you're close to that you know that if you turned up at their door they would open the door no questions asked it might be just one person it might be two or just have that in the back of your mind and just know that even though we're going through what we're going through if those people have had no symptoms if those people are well and they're healthy they're going to open their door to you, course, you know? course, if you're yeah. well and healthy and you have no symptoms and you feel like you are in danger they will open their door don't not use that avenue if it, if it's available for you and there are you know if it's possible when you're out of the house there are domestic violence helplines that you can call if you can leave the house and you can have a private conversation which i know isn't always possible but if it is do do use that route if you feel that you need to otherwise really work on reducing that stress and anxiety when you're at home as much as you possibly can and for the people other people who are who are listening who are not in that kind of situation you know and joe's been saying recently on social media be the eyes and ears for your neighbors if something sounds off it probably is and it's better to make a call and be wrong than to not make a call and someone be seriously hurt because in those types of situations actually it's on us it's on us to to intervene to protect to to speak out where that person can't yeah thanks jay yeah no definitely so you know there, there are cases and you know there may be people that are watching this right now but i'm, I'm pretty much know the sort of people that are watching this now and hopefully they're all in safe and and, and uh, you know good good healthy relationships but you know you may have neighbors especially in flats but houses too but you, you may have neighbors that you hear start suddenly arguing a lot. And I'm, a, I'm an ex-police officer, as I was in the police service for nine years, and there's nothing worse than a, as a police officer arriving at a house to deal with a domestic incident that has gone to a stage of violence, of, of someone running out and literally going missing, or, or, or worse, with the children involved. And you know we don't need to fill that picture in, but the police would much prefer as a neighbor that you pick up the phone and say they're a bit noisy you can say please don't mention it was me if you if you don't want to get involved absolutely you have, you have to get involved everyone is involved with each other's lives right now everyone is whether we like it or not we should have been doing this years ago being involved with each other in a caring and kind way with no judgment and actually much better to pick up the phone for four neighbors to ring at the same time and say or at number 32 it's really noisy we're a bit worried about them in the same way if you have friends or family that you either suspect or you know that something is happening at home yeah. to have that call where you just very discreetly say listen i'm here if you need me if you need me call me i'm just letting you know because it is a difficult time and I, you know, and I'm in a very peaceful household and very blessed, but I know I, I can empathize. I know what it's like to be in that kind of environment. And I felt, um, I felt suffocated and contained and I could leave the house. So I, I can only imagine that if I, if this had been going on then, I truly don't know what I would have done. I really don't. So, so it, it is happening folks. The domestic violence calls to police have gone down, but that's only because people can't call because they'd, they'll be too scared to. Domestic violence will not have gone down. In fact, they've just realized that actually it is going up, the rates are going up again. But let's please, you know, be people's eyes and ears for them because actually there will be people that can't ring, they can't pick up the phone and they can't make a call because they're too scared to even do that. Thank you so much, Jay, for your time and your gorgeous energy. And I wish you and your little one, what's her name again, I've forgotten. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, which means light. Oh, it's just so gorgeous. She's well, I, I, I would love to have you on the show again because I'm going to do another 21 days because obviously we're still here. Um, <laughs> oh. So, yes, it's going to, it's, you know, like stage set, set, set two of the next lot of episodes. So um, let's have you on for another fun kind of like what you can do to zhuzh up your sex life maybe 
Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Why not? Why not? Why not? Um, but that was the Amigo show. I'm Joe Wobinshaw. I hope you enjoyed this show. Um, be everyone's eyes and ears, and that's across the board, not just for people having, but you know, we need to care for each other. We're a big community now. We're always all connected, but even more so right now. So thank you for tuning in. I hope you have a great day, whatever you're doing. Take care.